I'm Makiko Tajima. I'm a sake specialist and a researcher of food culture. In this lecture, I will talk about what kind of main dishes and side dishes go well with Japanese sake. I expect you may be familiar with the term pairing. The word pairing is used to refer to food and drinks that go well together. For example, wine pairing refers to foods that go well with wine. And coffee pairing refers to foods that go well with coffee. The Japanese have traditionally used the French word mariage, but pairing is used more commonly around the world. On this occasion, I'm going to talk about pairing in relation to sake. In other words, sake pairing. If you know a bit about sake pairing, then when you serve guests sake, you will be able to dazzle them with main dishes and side dishes that make surprising combinations. So what does a good sake pairing consist of? Basically, a good sake pairing will enhance the sweetness and umami of both the sake and its dish and promote each other's flavors. If sake is paired with main dishes and side dishes, the umami and sweetness of the sake will be enhanced. Its aroma will be prominent and it will ultimately be more delicious than if it were consumed without any accompanying dishes. Of course, bitter and astringent tastes are not always bad. As accents, they can sometimes broaden the flavors of sake. For example, whether the sake is sweet or dry, it will contain the sweetness of the rice, meaning that it goes incredibly well with salty food. That's why sake and squid pickled in salt is an all-time favorite pairing in Japan. However, thanks to radical developments in brewing technology over these several decades, there are now many fruity and delicate types of sake being produced, and these do not necessarily go well with salty squid. So, let's divide the various types of sake into four categories. For each of these categories, I will give ideas for good pairings, which you can try out for yourself. Here is a graph that categorizes types of sake according to aroma and taste. The vertical axis is aroma, and the horizontal axis is taste. The higher you go up the vertical axis, the stronger and more complex the aroma is. At the lower end is weak and simple aroma. As for the horizontal axis, the further left you go, the simpler and lighter the taste is. The further right you go, the stronger and more complex it is. Based on these four categories by aroma and taste, I have presented these four types of sake. The first is low-alcohol sparkling junmaishu, which is characterized by its gentle aroma, soft sweetness, and refreshing acidity. The second is a junmai daigin joshu. It has a fruity aroma and the full umami of rice. The next one is a junmaishu. It delivers the umami of rice even more powerfully than the junmai daigin joshu. And it has a gentle aroma. The finishing taste is sharp. The fourth is a koshu made out of kijoshu. It has a very powerful and complex aroma. In terms of its taste, it has a gentle mouthfeel and thick taste, while also having a natural sweetness that provides a gentle aftertaste. Kijoshu is a sweet Japanese sake that has been prepared using sake instead of water, and it has a distinctive thick taste. Each type has its own distinctive characteristics, which should give you a real sense of the wide variety in sake flavors. This is where these four types fit on the graph. What are the principal factors that determine how you experience the taste of sake? When we consume sake in our daily lives, our impression of the taste will depend, to a large extent, on the balance of sweetness, umami, and acidity. The balance between these three tastes is joined by factors such as voluminousness of alcohol, bitterness, astringency, and aroma 
to determine the overall impression of the sake. On this occasion, I will try pairing each of these four sake with cream cheese. Like sake, cheese is a fermented product. On that basis, sake and cheese are said to go very well together. But is this really the case? Cream cheese also has sweetness, umami, and acidity. Let's find out how these tastes go with the sweetness, umami, and acidity of sake. At this point, I should mention a few points to bear in mind when trying out pairing. First, the vessels containing different sake should be similar in shape and material, so that you can compare under fair conditions. Second, you should decide whether to eat the food then drink the sake, or vice versa, and then stick with that order throughout. On this occasion, the food will be first, and the drink second. In other words, I will first take a bite of cream cheese. While I'm still chewing the cream cheese, I will take a sip of the sake, mix it in my mouth, and then evaluate the pairing. I will start by pairing the cream cheese with the sparkling Jun Mai Shu. It's food first, drink second. After the sharp acidity of the cream cheese and its milky body expands in the mouth, the refreshing acidity and faint sweetness of the sparkling Junmai Shu blends harmoniously with these tastes, enhancing the umami and sweetness of both the cheese and the sake. What a wonderful pairing! So how well does the cream cheese go with the other three types? When the cream cheese is paired with the Junmai Daiginjo Shu, the milky body of the cream cheese overpowers the umami of the sake. As a result, the flavor of the sake ends up being weaker than if it were consumed by itself. Therefore, I would call this an average pairing. How about cream cheese with Junmai Shu? The acidity and milk body of the cream cheese breaks the sake's inherent balance of sweetness, umami, and acidity. Just like the previous pairing, the taste of the sake is less pronounced than if it were consumed by itself. Therefore, this too is an average pairing. Now I will pair the cream cheese with the aged Kijoshu. The strong bitterness of the sake that I sensed initially gradually blends with the cheese in the mouth to create a caramel-like sweetness accompanied by a pleasant, mature bitterness. This is a very good pairing. Thus, it is inaccurate to say that cheese always goes well with sake. It depends on the type of sake taste. Is it fair to say that cream cheese never goes well with Junmai Daiginjo Shu and Junmai Shu? Let's find out. I took a little time to prepare the cream cheese as a simple side dish. Now let's see how well it pairs with the four types of sake. The recipe for the cream cheese based side dish that I prepared is as follows. I made cream cheese topped with kombu tsukudani. The kombu tsukudani is made by boiling seaweed in sweetened soy sauce. You can buy kombu tsukudani in the delicatessen. To make miso laced cream cheese, you take a whole cream cheese, spread miso over it, and leave it in the fridge for four days. After the four days have passed, you remove the outer miso layer and then cut the cheese into bite-sized chunks. The soy sauce of the tsukudani and the miso of the miso lacing both provide classic Japanese fermented seasoning. To make cream cheese topped with blueberry jam, you simply add unsweetened blueberry jam on top of the cream cheese. This recipe will provide the sweetness and acidity of the fruit. So, how will the results differ compared to the pairings I tried earlier when I used cream cheese without topping. Let's compare the results. The sparkling Junmai Shu went very well with the cream cheese. However, when paired with the kombu tsukudani and miso lacing, 
the result is so-so. When I tried cream cheese on its own with the Junmai Daiginjo Shu, Junmai Shu, and the aged Kijo Shu, it did not particularly enhance the taste of sake. However, having added certain taste elements to the cream cheese, it now pairs very well with these sake types. In other words, the gentle tastes of new types of sake, like sparkling Junmai Shu, go very well with the fresh acidity and creaminess of cream cheese. In the case of Jun Mai Shu, which has a substantial umami flavor of rice, a great pairing can be achieved by the addition of classic Japanese fermented products like soy sauce and miso. Having analyzed these four types of sake, we now know that the light-tasted, low-alcohol sparkling Jun Mai Shu goes nicely with the freshness of the cream cheese. The acidity and sweetness of a blueberry jam topping complement these sake types well too. However, the addition of the umami of the kombu in tsukudani and the umami of miso in miso lacing does not make such a great pairing. Conversely, the robust taste of junmai type sake, such as junmai daiginjo shu and junmai shu, go better with cream cheese if you add the soy based flavor of the tsukudani and the miso flavor. However, the acidity and sweetness of a blueberry topping did not benefit the junmai daiginjo shu and Junmai Shu that we used this time. Compared to standard sake, the aged Kijoshu has a much higher concentration of amino acid, a flavor component of umami. Therefore, it has a very distinct taste and aroma. It went well with miso lacing, but not so well with the soy taste of tsukudani. In terms of aroma, Junmai Daiginjoshu and aged Kijoshu both have a powerful aroma, but Junmai Daiginjo Shu's aroma is fruity, while the aroma of aged Kijoshu is a pungent, matured aroma that some may find disagreeable. The types of flavor of dish that make good pairings will therefore differ between the two. This graph does not provide an exhaustive guide to all the types of sake according to taste and aroma and the types of food they go well with. However, the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association have compiled a chart of the various types of Japanese sake with pairing suggestions, so please check this out. I have prepared here four more side dishes. Can you tell what type of sake each one goes well with? Here is a caprese salad, a salad made from tomatoes and mozzarella. Here is a dish of grissini wrapped in parma ham. This one is a gorgonzola pasta salad. I have added some walnuts and apple. Notice that these are all Italian dishes. The final side dish is vanilla ice cream. It contains plenty of milk fat. Now I'll show you four types of sake that go well with these dishes. Let's start with the caprese salad. It goes very well with the sparkling Junmai Shu. The fresh flavor of the mozzarella, the mellow olive oil, the sweet and sour flavor of the tomatoes, and the green notes of the basil beautifully complement the soft sweetness and refreshing acidity of the sparkling Junmai Shu. Next is the Parma ham wrapped grissini. It pairs magnificently with the Junmai Daiginjo Shu. Its fruity aroma and the refined Parma ham aroma blend together, creating the kind of taste sensation you get when you eat Parma ham and melon. The robust taste of the Junmai Daiginjo Shu chimes well with the umami of the ham, which promotes the sake. Now for the Gorgonzola pasta salad. It goes astonishingly well with Junmai Shu. The creaminess of the Gorgonzola reacts well with the robust and clean taste of the Junmai Shu, and the aroma of walnuts in the salad go really well with the Junmai Shu's gentle aroma. Finally, the vanilla ice cream. Sake and ice cream, I hear you ask? Well, I can tell you that this ice cream pairs very well with the seven-year-old Kijoshu. 
If you pour the kijoshu over the ice cream as if it were a sauce, the thick, milky flavor of the vanilla ice cream changes to a rum and raisin like taste, and the pungent taste inherent in the kijoshu softens to create a mellow flavor. So I have paired Japanese sake with Italian dishes and with vanilla ice cream. There are still many more possibilities for sake pairing. In the past, I was involved in a project to introduce Japanese sake at a trade fair in Italy, organized by Slow Food Italy. During the project, I realized that sake goes very well with Italian cheeses and other Italian food, and that there may be many great pairings. Since then, I have researched unconventional sake pairing. For example, I have tried pairing sake with Italian dishes. And desserts. The possibilities for sake pairing are endless. I believe that Japanese sake will be paired with an ever greater range of food from all around the world, bringing more and more people together around the dinner table and bringing new life to this cultural tradition. In this lecture, I provided some examples of delicious sake pairing that can impress your guests. I hope that at least some of what you learned today will come in handy for those times when you are serving Japanese sake to guests.